discuss your pre-recorded video or pre-recorded discussion for lesson, a uh, last lesson for Philippine literature. So since we've already discussed uh, the Philippine, uh, the introduction for Philippine literature, so now let's continue our discussion. I make this a uh, pre-recorded video for you uh, to access it easily. As I've said, that uh, you can repeat this, um, uh, you can repeat it every day this pre-recorded video for you to understand further the lesson for this uh, day so now let's continue it by knowing our topic for this morning so our topic would be the pre-spanish period particularly in the year of 1565 so before we will be knowing the content or the sub uh, topics of this lesson let's know first what is the general or what is our general objectives so for you so for my student as uh, uh for my student or for you uh, to be to be able to have the certain goal or a certain result in uh, after the discussion we will be setting some goals so what are those at the end of this lesson you should be able to identify the cultural linguistic and aesthetics qualities of philippine literature pieces produced during what particular era or period pre-spanish period next to that at the end of the lesson you will also uh, discuss the types or we will also discuss the types of literature what uh, period again or during the spanish period and lastly you will be appreciating the contribution of this literary pieces to the present corpus of Philippine literature. So meaning to say, so at so meaning to say at the end of this discussion, you as my student will appreciate, will will uh will appreciate the the literary pieces that is eventually uh we are be we use nowadays. Not only uh in the future needs or in the present needs, we this uh this uh pre-Spanish or this literature is actually in the pre-Spanish period. Kaya, ito yung magiging goal, ito yung magiging uh, matututunan natin after the discussion. So now, let's discuss or let's enter the word, the world, or the era of pre-Spanish period. So before anything else, let's know what happened in pre-Spanish period. Okay? This is actually the historical background of pre-Spanish period. What happened to that period? What are those literary pieces that is that can be found in that era? So it said that our forefathers or our ancient uh, already have a body of literature. Meaning to say, um, our ancient or uh, the past person in that time is has its own literary pieces. So meaning to say, Filipino that time innate literature or filipino that time has its own literature even before the arrival of the spaniards so um yung literature natin uh, the literature or the literata literary pieces of the literary pieces of the of philippines is particularly from the filipinos but um it enhanced or it actually evolved to another era kasi bakit because of the invade of the Spaniards. They have costumes costumes and traditions comparable to other parts of the globe. They have their own system of writing, alphabet, and other uh, nuance of working body of literature. So there are different, different kinds of literature in that time, and the Filipino also have their, their own literature. But in the invasion of the Spaniards, nag the, the from the literary pieces that's coming from to the Filipino, it actually now mixed to another type of literary pieces which is coming from the Spaniards. Next, our main language are related to Malaya, Polynesian, family of languages spoken in vast area covering mainland, Southeast Asia, East Timor, Polynesia, Micronesia, and South Pacific Island. We have our own system of writing called Baybayin. So, Baybayin co consisting of three vowels and 14 consonants. Baybayin came from the word baybay, which means spelling. The image below shows the Baybayin characters and corresponding sound represented. 
Okay, as I've said that in that time, Filipino has its own literary pieces. And the starting, uh, starting work uh, in uh, starting work, which is eventually is includes in the literary pieces, is called by buying. By buying is a consisting of three vowels or four consonants. Meaning to say, uh, this literary pieces is pertaining to the writings of our Filipino on how the Filipino citizen or how the Filipinos can communicate to others. They are using by buying. By buy, which means spelling. So I will be showing. I will be showing the example of by buying. Okay, this is actually the examples of by buying or uh, syllab. Uh, syllabary showing in the characters in the sound the by buying ito this is the examples as i've said in communicating in that time um filipinos use as by buying so this is the first steps or this is the first literary pieces that coming from the filipino itself kasi nga sinasabi ko our forefathers or the ancient dati is if dati is actually have their own literary pieces um, nadadagdagan lang yung kaalaman ng, ng, ng Filipino that time because of the invasion of different country since there is so called invasion meaning to say from the Filipino literary pieces it will mix into another uh, another type of literary pieces so ano yon? of course those literary pieces that coming from the country itself na dinadala dito sa Pilipinas at anong una yon? This anong anong country yon ang pinakamaraming literary pieces na dinala sa Philippines is the Spaniards. So that is why this is so-called pre-Spanish period kasi we will be knowing those literary pieces that that created in the era of pre-Spanish period. So let's go, let's proceed now to the next slide. Okay. For the next slide, this is actually the Philippine literary pieces during the pre-Spanish period. So today, uh, so this uh, slide, let's start now to uh, let's start to know what are those literary pieces. Okay. So first and foremost, the first um literary pieces that during in the sp pre Spanish pre-Spanish period is the legends. So legends uh, in pre-Spanish period are fix uh, fictitious narrative which explain the origin of things places or names the early filipino customs are also depicted in them as it entertains the pe the people during gatherings and occasions so what are the examples of legends we have the legend of the galog uh and the legend of the Philippine archipelago of Visayan. So the legend of Tagalog is coming from, uh, of course, is the word Tagalog. It is coming from Tagalogs. It is written by a Tagalog person. While the legend of Philippine Philippine archipelago is written from Visayan, Visayas, or it is written by Visayan person. Okay. Okay, so that is the examples of the legend. So, literally, to be exact, to explain what this legend is, when we say legend, it is actually the stories in oral tradition. So, as you can see, uh, the different uh, type of legend, it is coming from what places of a certain person is. Like, for example, in the legend of Tagalog. So, meaning to say, this kind of legend is all about Tagalog people. While in the legend of Philippine archipelago, it is talk about the, the people in the Visayan area. So, you know, nga, that is why it is so called oral traditional tradition and narrative of human action because the legend itself is particularly on what is happening in the, the, the place or what is happening in the place of Luzon. Min, uh, Visayas or Mindanao. So that is why the title itself, you can uh, eventually know that this literary is a legend because it's coming from Tagalog. What happened in the Tagalog? You will be narrating what happened. Okay? And of course, when we say legend, they are usually old but are believed to have taken place with than human history so that is why it's called legend because it makes us the world the word old and it is about human history so that is the first philippine literary pieces during pre-spanish 
period. So let's proceed to another one. We also have folk tales. So folk tales are stories made up about life, adventure, love, horror, and humor. Where one can derive lessons about life. A popular example include the sun and the wind, and also the boy who became a stone of Tingyans. Okay. So uh, folk tales. So folk tales is eventually all about um, fairy tale. Um, fairy tales, uh, fables is actually a kind of folk tales. Um, when we say kasi folk tales, it is also a traditional, uh, a traditional narrative, usually anonymous, handed down uh, orally. So meaning to say, it's all about uh, fairy tales. So it's the characters has its special kind of hero story. So that is. Uh, that is folk tales. That's it. So that is the two Filipino literary pieces during the pre-Spanish period. We have the legend and next the folk tales. So let's proceed to another slide. Okay. So since we've already discussed the the li Philippine literary or the two first Philippine literary pieces in the pre-Spanish period, let's undergo now or let's go now to the pre-Spanish poetry. So what are those what are those literary works that is poetry in that time? So the first one is the epics. Epics are long narrative poems in which a series of heroic achievements or events, usually of a hero involving supernatural forces, phenomena. List, listed below are some of the epics celebrated among the various groups in the country. So just to be reminded, you guys or mga ma'am. Just please familiarize these examples of an epics. So before going, before I will be introducing to you guys what are those different epics that sub celebrated among the various groups in the country, let me explain further that epics is a long, often book length. So meaning to say there is no such a limitation with regards to the measurement or the pages of the book. It is narrative all also in a verse form that retails the hero heroic journey kaya nga sinabi ko heroic journey and it's also includes what supernatural forces okay so that's it that is uh, the epic that is uh, the explanation or the definition of epic so always remember when we say epic it is an open book length meaning to say there is no such thing measurement about the pages or there is no such thing called limitation about the pages it is open book and it is long so what are those various uh, pertaining or various um epics pertaining to the different groups in the country okay la let's uh discuss it one by one or i will be telling you one by one first is the biag ni lamang from ilocanos second hudhod ni aliguyon from ifugals Third, we have Alim from Ifugos also, Ibalon from Bicol, Handyong from Bicol, Hinilawud from Bicol, Maragtas from Visayas, Haraya from Visayan, Lagda from Visayan, Hari sa Bukid from Visayan, Kumintang from Tagalog, Bernardo Carpio, Tagalog, Parang Sabir, Moro, Darangan, Moro, Indarap, Patra, at Sulaiman, Moro, Dagoy, Tagbanua, Sudsud, coming from Tagbanua also, Tatuang, from Bag, and that's it. So that is the example or the various um, epics in the different group in the country. So meaning to say, the epics is coming from the Di the different group in our country. What are those group that is partic that having his its history? So meaning to say, all of that is all about their culture or all about their selves. So that's why the variation of that you can eventually know if this is from Moro, kasi nandoon yung story or yung culture na kung anong meron sila nandoon sa libro. And when we say kasing epics, napakahaba nyan ha. Walang limitasyon, and it is about superhuman deeds, uh, 
fabulous adventures, yan, mga ganyan, supernatural phenomena, yan ang epics. Okay, and it also um, in narrative form. Okay, so next, let's proceed to the next one. Let's proceed for folk song. So, I've already discussed what is folk song. Kasi folk song is actually included in our first topic, right? Okay. Folk song are the oldest form of Philippine literature that emerged, which are composed mostly of 12 syllables. Per line of the four in verse, this song mirror the culture of each group singing specific song per occasion. Celebration, activities, Listed below are some of the song and the corresponding occasion celebration. So before we will go to the examples or those folk song that is uh, in the country, let me let me explain it further. When we say kasi folk song, if epics is particularly on the supernatural deeds or uh, fabulous adventure about the about the group of people in the country, when we say folk song kasi it's all about song. Song. It, uh, folk song is all about the song of okay it's all about a song so meaning to say uh the group uh the country itself or the place in the country itself has has its own folk song kung ano yung kanta na from that culture or from that different group is called folk song so what are those folk songs that presented in the country so i also have an example We have Kundiman, Song of Love. Yun nga sinasabi na, sener serenated song. So, meaning to say, folk song has its own genre. Okay, Kumintang, War or Battle Song. Dalit, Worship Song. Uyayi or Hele, Lullaby Song. Diana or Danaya, Wedding Song. Soliraning, Laborer or Workman Song. Talindaw, Fisher or Fishing Song. And that's it. That is the example of folk song. Again, folk song is particularly on this, uh, particularly on a song that is actually written in a certain place. So there are uh, there are a lot of folk song from different places. Uh, that folk song is actually written why? Because pinapamahagi ulit nila what is the culture that they have. And actually, folk song is used as th that time that era, kasi. Ayan yung magiging uh, music in that time. The genre of music in that time is folk song. Okay, let's continue our discussion for the Spanish period. So let's uh, go now for the Spanish period. We're already done knowing the literary pieces in pre-Spanish period. Now, let's undergo with the Spanish period. So Spanish period in the year of 1565 and 18. 98. So, what are those literary composition that uh, particularly in the Spanish period? So, first one is the RT e Reglas de la Lengua Tagala or the Art and Rules of the Tagalog Language, written by Father Blancas de San Jose and translated to Tagalog by Tomas Pinpin in 1610. So, what is this RT Reglas de Laguna? This is particularly on the art and rules in of our Tagalog language. So, it is literally written by Father Blancas uh, de San Jose and has been translated by Tomas P Pinpin in 1610. So, this is the first literary composition in the Spanish period. Next, we have Compendio de la Lengua Tagala or understanding the Tagalog language. So since in that day we were, they already know the art and rules about Tagalog language, of course you will be understanding what are those rules. So in that time it is actually the continuation of RTA Reglas de la Lengua Tagala. It is the continuation of it is the Compendio de la Lengua Tagala or meaning to say the understanding uh, the Tagalog language. It is written by Father Gaspar de San Agustin in 1703. Next to Compedio, we also have Vocabulario de la Lengua Tagala ta or Tagalog Vocabulary. So as you can see, napapansin nyo as you observe that all of the literal composition is all about Tagalog first. So let's uh, try to look if 
there is a Visay Visayan literary in this uh, time of era. Okay, vocabulary de lengua Tagala is actually the Tagalog vocabulary. It is the first Tagalog dictionary written by Pedro de San Buena Ventura in 1613. So next literary composition is vocabulario de la lengua pampanga. As you, as you can see, there is another group of person that is eventually uh, include in the literary pieces in Spanish area. We have pampanga. So meaning to say vocabulary de la lengua pampanga is all about the vocabularies in pampanga. Yan. The first book in pampanga written by Diego in 1732. Next, we have vocabulary de lengua bisaya. Yun ang sinasabi ko, time to time, um, there are a uh, group of person in the country that eventually uh, making a literary pieces in the era of Spanish period. So, vocabulary de lengua bisaya is, is all about the vocabulary of bisayan. The best language book in Visayan by Mateo Sanchez in 1711. Okay, so that is the five literary composition, to be exact. So, aside from the five, we also have six, six literary composition in, pre uh, in Spanish period. We have Arte de Lengua Ilocana. Arte de Lengua Ilocana is the art of Iloc Ilocano language. So, we've already uh, included Pampanga. We've already here uh, the Visayan vocabulary. So, here in the sixth one is all about Ilocano language. So, Ilocano language, this book is particularly on the grammar of Ilocano. Next to that, we also have Arte de Lengua Biculano. If there is an Ilocano language, of course, Biculano has also. Okay, it's called as Arte de la Lengua Bilocano, is the art of the Bicol langu language in English. So, this is the first book in Bicol language and written by Father Marcos Lisbon in 1754 okay so there there are two uh actually two type of literary pieces that included in spanish period also we have folk song aside from folk song is included to pre-spanish folk song also included in spanish period so i've already discussed what is folk song right so let's go now to recreation place Recreation place, there are many recreational plays performed by Filipinos during the Spanish time. Almost all of them were in poetic form. So recreational plays is um, commonly used in performances. So since it's called place, because it is eventually undergo with action, undergo with performance. So in that time in Spanish period, there are recreational plays that to be perform okay so that's it let's proceed of course not only the recreational place we also have moro moro the moro moro or like the sinacolo the moro moro is presented also on a special stage this is performed during town festas to entertain the people and to remain them of their christian religion so the moro moro is actually a performance uh, also um, comparing or similar with the recreational plays, uh, this is eventually similar to that one. Kasi bakit? Si Moro Moro, my special stage din siya, and my performance then. You have to include your, uh, you have to perform or you have to act in the Moro Moro. So what is the importance of the Moro Moro? For that time in the Filipino uh, era, the, the, uh, the Christian religion for that time that um, it will remain or the Filipino at that time will remain that there are a, or, the relig or the religion in that era is Christian religion. So that's a, the Moro Moro. Let's continue. Karagatan, this is a poetic vehicle of social religious nature celebrated during the death of a person. So Karagatan is particularly is in a reenacting or is performing about or this is uh, this literary pieces is all about the death of, of the person so as you can observe as you can um, realize everything that literary pieces is not only for the person that is actually alive 
meron din palang ginagawang literary pieces na coming from the dead one or from or focus to the dead person. So that's it. What is the name of the literary pieces? It is called Karagatan. Next, we have Duplo. The Duplo replaces the Karagatan. This po poetic Joe's in speaking in a reasoning the rules are taken from the Bible and from proverbs and sayings. So, uh, eventually in the time, Duplo replaces the Karagatan. Kasi since Duplo is particularly on the dead person, it changed, uh, ay Karagatan, Karagatan pala, sorry, is particularly on the dead person, it's changed to Duplo. So, meaning to say the Duplo is, is, is um, about a po poetry or poetic joss that is actually about joss that is actually about the rules or taken from the bible or or proverbs and sayings so that is the differences between karagatan and duplo so now let's proceed to the balagtasan balagtasan is very familiar to us even our elementary days we involve or in, uh, we involve with this kind of activity which is balagtasan Balagtasan, this is a po poetic also draws or a contest of skills in debate on particular topic or issue. This is replaced the duplo and the held to the honor of Francisco Balagtas Balaz, Bala, Baltazar. Okay, Balagtasan is actually um, very, ano, very familiar to us because Balagtasan is eventually given to us as an activity in our elementary and high school. Even in college, we can we can undergo with balagtasan, or we can we can um, encounter. Sorry, with the word encounter balagtasan. So balagtasan is particularly a formal debate. So yan. So yung parang merong tagapag, uh, yung tagag sa gitna merong dalawang nagdedipate. So that is balagtasan. So let's proceed to the dungaw. Dungaw. This is the chant in the free verse by a bereaved person or his representative beside the corpses of the dead to, de to definite ma meter or rhyming the scheme is used so this is dung ao. um from the word dung ao, parang it's like uh, you visited a certain dead person not like it's it's like yung parang sinilip mo siya so that's it that is dung ao. it is actually a free chant okay when we say chant, it is actually repeated rhythmic pra praise. Repeated rhythmic uh, uh, praises or typically one shouted or sung in unison. Yan. Yan yung chant. Meaning to say, Dung Ao is a free chant verse. Okay? Let's proceed. We have Awit and Corrido. The Awit are fabricated stories from writers' imagination. Although the settings and the characters are European, the corrido refers to the narration, the awit refers to the chanting, and the corrido and the awit are both referred to as narrative poetry. So, awit and corrido has its own connection because awit is particularly is fa particularly or fabricated with the stories or imagination of the artist. And the corrido itself is all about narration. So, that is why it is both connected the awit and corrido okay so let's go now to the period of enlightenment so we've already done knowing the literary pieces in the spanish era let's proceed now to the period of enlightenment so let me let me uh, tell to you the historical background of the period of enlightenment so after 300 years of passive Passivity under the Spanish rule, the Filipino spirit reawakened when the, the three priests, Gomez, Burgos, and Zamora, were uh, guillotin. Um, without sufficient evidence of guilt, this occurred on the 17th, 70th of February. This was buttressed with the spirit of liberalism. When the Philippines opened its doors to world trade and with the coming of a liberal leader in the person of Governor Carlos Maria de la Torre, the Spaniards were in, unable to suppress the tide of rebellion among the Filipinos. The once religious spirit transformed itself into one of the nationalism and the Filipinos demanded changes in the government and in 
the church. So meaning to say, the period of enlightenment, uh, the Filipinos now know what are those uh, problem that being uh, that being created in that in the Spanish period. Kasi as uh, a period of enlightenment, nandiyan na, lumalabas na ang the different literary pieces that particularly on enlightenment, on how the Filipino can see what happened or the voices of Filipino uh, in that day in uh, how the Spaniards can invade the Philippines that is actually wrong. They're having uh, certain activities that is not fair to the Filipino. So what are those persons that using the literary pieces to show the problems in the invasion of the Spaniards? Okay? Let's now go with the propaganda movement in 1872 and to 1896. This movement was spearheaded mostly by the intellectual middle class like Jose Rizal, Marcelo del Pilar, Gershano Lopez Jaina, Antonio Luna, Mariano Ponce, Jose Maria Jose Marie Panganiban, and Pedro Paterno. And the objective of this uh, movement were to seek reforms and changes like the following. So, to get equal treatment for the Filipinos and the Spaniards under the law, to make the Philippines a col colony of Spain, to restore Filipino representation in the Spanish Cortes, and to Filipinize the parishes, and lastly, to give... Okay, wait. To give the Filipinos freedom of speech of the press assembly and their redress of grievances. So this is the first uh, way on the person, like for example, this intellectual middle class. This is this is their first uh, way for us to know what happening in that time. So kaya nga this period called called the period of enlightenment because this is the way, or uh, this is the day, or that is the day na yung mga Tao, yung mga, like for example, from the leader itself, Jose Rizal, they are starting to reform, to give, to seek a reform, to show to the Filipino citizen what is happening, what is the real happening in that time. So that's why in that period, it is called pro propaganda movement. And from propaganda movement, there are a lot of literary pieces that can be shown in that time for us, for the Filipino to be enlightened. Okay, let's continue. What are the highlights of the propaganda movement? There were three principal leaders of the propaganda movement. There were Jose Pirizal Mercado, Marcelo H. Del Pilar, and Graciano Lopez Jaina. Here are highlights about them and they have done for our country. Dr. Jose Rizal. So let's discuss first Dr. Jose Rizal. Let's focus with the with the literary pieces of Dr. Jose Rizal. So we all, we've already know the background of Dr. Jose Rizal. So I will be not uh, reading it because alam ko we've already know that one. What uh, the the name of Dr. Jose Rizal? Uh, what year does Dr. Jose Rizal uh, no, born? So you can eventually read by this. So let's go now to the literally or the writings of Dr. Jose Rizal. So. The first Enlightenment book of Dr. Cerezal is Nole Metangere. Ano ba tong Nole Metangere? Nole Metangere is a literary pieces or literary works. So, Nole Metangere is creating, uh, created by Dr. Cerezal for us to be enlightened. What is the real happening in that time? So, this was the novel that gave spirit to the propaganda movement and paved the way to the revolution against the Spain. So, meaning to say, Dr. Cerezal gave some characters that is in that is actually in re reality. Merong characters doon, lahat ng characters doon, to be exact, is coming from reality. Kung anong nangyayari, bakit nila sinulat ito? Bakit sinulat ni Dr. Cerezal ito? Para mamulat ang mga Filipino that there is so-called what? A, a not fair treatment. Yon, not fair treatment. Um, the problem itself is the government which is the Spaniards para talaga maintindihan natin kung na, na inaabuso na pala tayo. So that's it, Noli Matangere. Pero hindi pa yan nag, nagtatapos. Nadagdagan pa yan with El Filibusterismo. It is a sequel or the continuation of Nole Metangere or the second book. 
Well, the Nolly Metong era exposed the evils in society, the Philly exposed those in the government and in the church. However, the Nolly has been dubbed the novel of society, while well, the Philly or the El Filibusterismo is that uh from politics so meaning to say since the nolimitang era in that time uh nakuha ng spaniards or nalaman that there is certain literary pieces that having uh the the problem in that day inaksyonan agad nila so since ganun yung nangyari gumawa si Jose Rizal ng another sequel or another book para para continue pa rin yung nangyayari at nalalaman pa rin nila what is actually happening in that time Okay? So, hindi pa dyan na natatapos. Also, Dr. Rosal Rosal uh, created literary pieces or work called Mi Ultimo Adios or My Last Farewell. This was a poem by uh, Rizal while he was incarcerated at the Fort Santiago. So, meaning to say, this is the, the, the poem of Dr. Rosal Rizal. He write it na yung day na yon doon na siya papatayin. That is why it is my last farewell or it is the last poem that I will be creating because afterwards, I will be sisentensyahan na siya ng Spaniards. Yan. Sobre la indolensya de los Filipinos kay Dr. Jose Rizal na yun, or the, on, in English, on the indolence of the Filipinos. It is an essay, so-called Filipino indolence, and an evaluation of the reason for such allegation. So, meaning to say, um, uh, this is actually the pieces or the the, the literary works of Doctor Oserizal na maliliit lang. Kasi the the literary works of the Oserizal that is very very famous and and very very used in the time is Nolimitang Hera, El Filibusterismo, and May Ultimo Arios. Okay. So next, we also have Filipinas dentro de cien años, or the Philippines within a century. It is an essay also that predicting an increasing influence of the U.S. in the Philippines. So in this in this type, not only in the Spaniards era, meron din sinulat si Dr. Cerezal that pertaining ng influence ng U.S. government or ng U.S. country, not only U.S. but also um, European. Yon, the Philippines and the decreasing interest of Europe here. So, mas malaki yung invasion or mas malaki yung influences ng USA than the Europe in the Philippines. So, sinulat din yon ni Dr. Jose Rizal. Next, the Alav Juventud Filipina or to the Filipino youth. This is very particular or this is very uh, familiar also to us. Why? Because um, this is the first one or this is the first poem that written by Jose Rizal. To the Filipino youth, Well, it is a poem result dedicated to the Filipino youth studying at UST. Kung ano naman yung nangyayari in the university or kung ano naman yung gustong sabihin ni Jose Rizal sa mga kabataan in that time. So this is the first one, first poem to, my, to the Filipino youth. Next is the El Consejo de las Dioses. The Council of the Gods. Kanya din yan. An other... Uh, Greco play manifesting admiration for Cervantes. Okay? Junto al Pasig, beside the Pasig River, written by Rizal when he was a 14 years of age. So this was the literary also of the Osa Rizal. Me, Peden versus, or you ask me for verses in 1882, and Alas Flores uh, de Helder Helderberg, or to the flowers of Helderberg. Two points manifesting result and useful depth of emotion. Also, uh, Jose Rizal created uh, or make the notas a la obra Successos de las Filipinas for El Dr. Antonio de Morga or notes on the Philippine events by Dr. Antonio de Morga in 1889. Kay Jose Rizal din to. So, P. Jacinto Memorias de un Estudiante de Manila or P. Jacinto Memories, Memoirs to be exact, to be specific to pronounce of a student of Manila in 1882. Yon. Then, Diario de Vi Viaje de Norte America or Diary of Voyage to the North America. So that was the, f uh, the literary pieces focusing on the uh, writings of Jose Rizal. So all of this one, all of that literary pieces is 
for the enlightenment of the Filipino. So, yan lang yon. So, the the fa very famous literary pieces that Dr. Jose Rizal gave or make is the No Limitangere, Mi Ultimo Adios, Adios, to the fellow youth, and also um, El Filibus Teri Terismo. So, yan. So, aside from that, there are a lot of uh, pieces or literary pieces that help that help to be to 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 show to us what is happening dal jan nag enlighten namulat ang lahat enlightenment namulat ang lahat kung ano ang nangyayari so that's it that is our discussion for this uh, day thank you very much for your understanding and patience about our discussion patience about our discussion i really really appreciate it mga ma'am and please please view our our Please view this discussion because it is, uh, it will come from, or it, I will be getting some coverage or some topic uh, in this lesson for our exam. So if no more question, if you have question, you can literally raise it in our GC. Thank you very much and have a nice day.